All right, so if I were to do a square root of x to the, oh, let's go with uh, 25th power, that's a big one. Well, again, you've got to make it even. So square root of x to the 24th times x, right? You pull one x off, make it an uh, even number. Then we do the square root of each one separately. So it would be x to the 24th and root x. Uh, we take the 24 and cut it in half when we do power. So this becomes x to the 12th times the square root of x. All right, now let's look at an example where I combine a bunch of these ideas. Let's take the square root of, let's go 63 x to the 12th, y to the 19th. Okay. If I'm going to simplify that, I need to find the perfect square factors of 63 which in this case are 9 and 7. So I'm going to take the square root of 9 times 7. That's my 63. x to the 12th, it's got an even power, so that is automatically a perfect square factor. y to the 19th, 19 is odd, so I need to make it even by peeling one off. So I'm going to make it y to the 18th times y. Okay. So now I've created as many perfect square factors as possible. Now I just simplify each one or evaluate them as much as I can. All right. So I'm going to leave these all under the roots for a moment. Then each one that I can evaluate, I should. So that's going to be a 3. The root 7 doesn't evaluate. This is x to the 6th. <coughs> This is y to the ninth, and this is root y. Now as a final display of the answer, I want to group together everything that's not under a root, like 3x to the sixth, y to the ninth. And then I can combine everything that's under a root into the same root. And I get 3x to the sixth, y to the ninth, times the root of 7y. Right. So these can get a little bit complicated, uh, but again, you're just, uh, just trying to find perfect square factors. Okay. With coefficients or numbers, the perfect square factors are, you know, from our list of perfect squares, they're going to be things like 1, 4, 9, uh, 16, 25, and so forth. Um, with variables and powers, you want to make sure to have even powers. So 19, you want to pull one off, make it 18 and 1, and so forth. Let's try one more, and this will involve a fraction. Uh, let's do the square root. Leave myself a little space here. Let's do 75 x to the 8th over, it's a big fraction, 121 uh, y to the 12th. Okay. So to solve this, I want to again split everything up into perfect squares. Now, 75 is really 25 times 3. So I'm going to call that 25 times 3, and the x to the 8th is already a perfect square. <coughs> On the bottom, 121 is itself a perfect square, as is y to the 12th. So now everything that can be written as a perfect square is. Um, so I'm going to split this up. Root 25, root 3, root x to the 8th all over root 121 and root of y to the 12th. 
And here I'm just going to be evaluating each root as they can be. So square root of 25 is 5. Root 3 doesn't simplify. And root of x to the 8th is x to the 4th. Here, root of 121 is 11. Root of y to the 12th ends up being y to the 6th. You want to cut that power in half. And then I might regroup these things just to make them look a little neater. We like to put radicals at the end. So let's put 5x to the 4th root 3 all over 11y to the 6th. Okay. All right, I think that looks pretty good. Um, yeah, I'm not too worried about any of the other stuff here. I think uh, that should get you through this section.